Welcome to the video. My name is Christopher Buell and I do non-emergency transportation sales. With me is Cortland and his dog, one of my top students. And uh, what is the dog's name? Otto. Otto. Uh, a Yorkie? Yep. And well, he's a, he's a Yorkie Maltese. He's a Morky. He's a mix. Okay. Cortland yes, is one of my top students and uh, he's been killing it. And basically... I wanted him to share some of his uh, secrets within non-emergency transportation. Uh, so go ahead, take it away. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're at, what you're doing. Uh, I'm Corlin with Glory Brothers Transport. Uh, we're a non-emergency transportation company offering wheelchair and stretcher services here in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, we've been up and running since January the 15th, and uh, you know we've been getting after it. What is your background? What did you do before this? Uh, business, entrepreneurship. Um, I've had a couple of businesses. I actually have two other businesses now um, that I operate. And, um, you know, that, that kind of got me into this point. I was looking for something more necessity-based and uh, in, in, in a need, a big need. And this is how I came across non-emergency transportation. One moment. Okay, I, th I think we're recording again. I had a, a quick interruption as uh, my downstairs neighbor came up. I, I, I apologize for that. Okay, so you've had two other businesses. You started in January. Yep. You have already achieved a high level. I mean, I don't wanna, but I, you've got customers you've met with uh, very interesting, very important, uh, companies. You've done an amazing job. Can you share how busy you are after you said, when did you start January? January 15th. January 15th. Yes. How, how busy are you? Yes, sir. So, uh, we're doing about 15 trips a week. Um, and most of those being private pay. Okay. Uh, yeah, starting out initially the whole month of January, we didn't have any trips. You know, it's all part of the process. Uh, you know, we started off planting seeds. Well, I keep saying we, but I. Uh, it's still it's still just me. You know, I have a part-time driver, but it's still me most of the time uh, doing all the work, you know, but that's understood, you know, initially stepping into business. Um, but, yeah, man, we started out uh, going door-to-door -door with brochures and uh, business cards to all the facilities, uh, you know, nursing home, diocese centers um skill care rehab we've been in the okay. hospitals yeah so we, we've been everywhere getting our name out and uh you know slowly but surely we started getting calls and started getting traction what what is that process like has anybody yelled at you has it been like get out of here salesperson i mean what what is what is the process of selling non-emergency like well it's actually very nice because it's a necessity you know so Everyone that I've introduced myself to, they've happily accepted my information. And, um, you know, I, I've heard a lot of times every time I come in, well, not every time I come in, but a lot of times I come in, they're like, oh, my God, this is such a big need. Uh, I actually went to one facility here. And the lady was telling me, like, I've been praying all week. The, the social services um, uh, lady, she was like, I've been praying all week for a solution to my, my problem with uh my problem with finding transportation for this specific individual uh he has dialysis on saturday our vans only run during the week so i think the biggest thing is mental uh getting over that fear of going in and introducing your services to people that's the biggest obstacle because at the end of the day everybody has a job to do and uh if you can be that solution to someone else's problem they're always going to be happy to uh you know get your information i feel like the big secret about selling non-emergency transportation is that it's easy and it's needed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, rarely uh, do I get someone that's rude. Exactly. I will experience people that are in a hurry. They would prefer to not be um, on the phone with a salesperson. Exactly. But really nine times out of 10, they want you. Exactly. Um, as far as uh, 
you, you part of the thing that really made me say, listen, we got to get Cortland on on here is I do old school, you know, and I, I picking up the phone and and uh, which is fine. And, 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 and but you have had success with Facebook marketing. Yep. And, and yep. Uh, I don't want to pry into too many of your secrets, but can you share your experience with Facebook marketing? I mean, it, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing in my city is presence. Uh, my competition, they don't have any online presence. And you no, know, that kind of signals to me that not a lot of people know about them. Only people that know about them is people that they work with or referrals, you know, being a new business, you don't have any referrals. You don't have any people you work with. So you have to get your name out there and social media is the best way to do it. Because one thing for sure, if the if an older person doesn't have a social media, the person that can't taking care of them does, or their their daughter, or their niece, or their nephew, or their son. So, uh, you know, getting your online presence is, building your online presence is everything. You know, you want to come off as, you know, reliable, friendly, professional, like you are in real life. You're not lying. You're just presenting your business in, uh, uh, in a social setting okay yeah so um you know and then you know first thing you do like when i always create my pages first thing i do is i invite all my family and friends to like my page okay right so this is a tip <laughs> this is a tip for y'all so when you do that initially you're going to get a lot of likes you're going to get a lot of comments uh when you you know invite everybody on your page to like it um so that's going to kind of trick the algorithm algorithm to show on more people pages. Really? So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when, as soon as you do that, you want to run some ads, right? So, uh, once you create your page, you know, do your first initial post and just be like, Hey, are you looking for reliable transportation? You know, just give them the strip and let them know what you do. Let them know where you serve. And then, uh, when you run that ad and you, uh, along with that initial amount of likes, you know, uh, your page is going to do numbers like initially that like, is a, we got uh we got about 32,000 engagements the first week 32,000 uh, yeah 32,000 engagements and and what was the the cost on that i think i spent like a hundred dollars a hundred dollars for 32,000 yep and yeah. what kind of business came out of that um i got four private pay uh, client, so you know, one round trip pay for that um, wow. that advertisement. Wow! And um, I got some um, facility interest. Uh, that's how I ended up connecting with um, Fort Benning. Okay. Uh, with one of their programs on Fort Benning, uh, they reached out to me and you know, um, seeing about providing services um, to them. I ain't gonna get too deep into that, but you know, we're that's in the works, you know, because we ended up sitting down. We had a conversation. We went over their needs. We went over how we could provide that for them. So now we're in the process of getting our certifications in place to provide those services for uh, a military installation. So that one, I, I, I don't even know how to phrase it, that one time $100 cost and tricking the algor algorithm got you 32,000, you know, essentially people saw your name. Yeah associated with your business, get yep. you four private pay runs and po potentially sat down with, uh, we'll see, uh, uh, some, you know, a facility could be, could be a big deal. Yeah, uh, definitely. Definitely. Even, no, even, even, even if we don't you know, even if we don't, uh, pan out with that facility, the connection we had during the conversation, you know that's more important than anything because the, the 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 your best marketing is word of mouth you know and a lot of times people they get too far in business and you know in a day like we used to talk about you're buying from you're i'm providing the service to you you know so you're trusting me as a person then you're trusting my company you know so if i'm a trusty and reliable person that we get along together well and you can tell like i'm readily prepared for you know any any situation i'm solution oriented right. 
then you're going to want to do business with my company, you know, and we talked about that. Right. Uh, yeah. So, you know what, that brings me into the next thing. You know, I started this little channel kind of on a whim and, and, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't know, I didn't know if I would have success. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. And you know, you came to me fairly early on when I started my channel from, from what I remember. And, yeah. uh, what has the experience been like working with me? It's been good. It's been real good. I man. want you, you to mean? criticize me. I want you to just yeah. not blow smoke, but you know, t tell me the good, the bad. Uh, I, you know, I'd like for people to know. So, yeah, I mean, definitely in business, the most important thing I've learned, like my first company, uh, I, I it, we, we came up during the pandemic. Um, I grew to from a 12 by 16 storage unit to a 250 foot bays and an office space with three staff members. Uh, but I did all that with no guidance and no mentorship. So ultimately, even though the business was a cash flow cow, uh, we failed just because of the, I didn't have any prior experience and I didn't seek any prior, anybody with the experience that could educate me on that. And that's what I said I wasn't going to do this time. You know, I was going to seek out individuals that already been through this and you've had two companies with eight or nine vans. And, you know, if you go through that, you got to know something, you know, so I actually came across your page. Like I was just looking up different things about uh, non-emergency transportation. And it was actually before I even, before we launched, I had uh, saw your page and then um, I connected with you. And then, uh, you know, ever since then, man, we, we've been, uh, we've been, like me and like uh, the most, most, what you've helped me with the most is sales, you know, um, how to interact, what questions to ask, um, where to go, who to speak to. Um, you know, a lot of times when people look at coaches, they look at them like the Holy Grail, they have the key to everything and have the answer to every question, but that's not always the case. You know, just our conversations, you indirectly gave me information. So we spoke on topics that made me go and search and, you know, push my education further, Interesting. you know? Yeah. Interesting. So like, it's, it's not all about like sitting down, like going to the whiteboard and, you know, uh, getting every answer, every question you have answered, but it's all about just having that conversation with somebody that's been in the field. And that's what I appreciate the most about you, man. Like uh, the conversation we've had, you know, about the mental health, uh, the mental health patients and, um, you know, how to interact with them, how to, uh, you know, another good thing you told me, man, you're like, you don't know where the business is going to come from. And that's how that, how, that's how it's been for me. So like I went from targeting specific people in specific facilities to just passing my information out, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to, to everyone, because in a day, this, the business that we're in, man, everyone has an older parent or older auntie or older somebody in their family is older or they will get older so we're not giving you our car for tomorrow it might be next year yeah you know? yeah yeah you know <clears throat> i don't know i i i i think i i may have told you the story if i haven't i don't think i've said it on my channel so one of my first customers like way long ago, when I've had my first business, back when I was married, that was a very long time ago. <laughs> my <laughs> my ex-wife and I, we took two vans full of uh, residents to a baseball yeah. game. Frankly, it was it was more stressful. Just, I think at some point the two vans got separated and trying to find the correct entrance. And, you know, frankly, we didn't know what we were doing. And that's, that's the truth. Most times in life, you don't really know what you're doing until you get involved. But we did this baseball game. And after the transport, you know, we, we waited and brought them back home. And, you know, a after the transport, they never gave me another single piece of business this nursing home for two, three years passes by. And I think I had like, 
I don't know if it was like three or four bands, but I wasn't very big. And, you know, I remember just being tired, man, just being unhappy and irritable because, because as time went on, my ex-wife more or less did the billing and I did the dispatching while driving. And I was one yeah. of those completely unsafe guys that was, you know, writing things down as I was driving. And, yeah. and uh, you know, one day I got this call and it was from a person that knew me from the baseball game. This one phone call doubled my business. Again, I did this baseball game, never got a piece of business from them ever since for two, three years, two, three years goes by. They remember me, they call and they say, we need you for all of our facilities. And they had like mm. different facilities. There was some kind of change. So, you know, it's, it, that's, that's it. You just don't know where the business is going to come from. And you don't know, you know, you, uh, my philosophy is you knock on every door you go to even the brokers. I don't like, you know, go to them. If they, I'm hesitant on the broker thing. If they're going to give you a good rate, then if they, if they don't, then don't take it. Yeah. Don't get in too much debt because they will rip you off. And I plan to do a video on that at some point, but, but, you know, do the, do everything, knock on doors, make phone calls, make faxes, do Facebook ads, don't prejudge anything because you don't know where the business is going to come from. And, 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 and <clears throat> I just feel like people, uh, you know, my last video was on this concept of, of, uh, what is the phrase, uh, uh, uh paralysis by analysis, you know, people want to know yeah. all the answers before they start. And that's just not realistic, you know, exactly. Exactly. I still don't, I still don't know everything, but really in reality, you don't have to know everything. You know, you know like and that's all you... <laughs> the other secret I've been thinking about, you know, that non-emergency is sort of what I love about it. Yeah, it's more regulated than it used to be. But, you know, anybody can come into the space. Anybody. Exactly. 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 And uh, we touching on brokers. Um, I deal with two brokers. Uh, I deal with a workers comp broker and I deal with access to care. Um both of those brokers, both of those brokers paid me my rates. Like I didn't have to drop my rates for them. I just sent my rate sheets over and they asked me, could we negotiate? And I said, you know, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, uh, like a lot of a big, a big important thing about this business is your profit and loss statement. You didn't know how much money you making and how much money you losing because running these Medicaid routes, like that's what companies in my area do, man. It's for pennies. Exactly. Some peanuts. Exactly. <laughs> you know, the, this this concept of getting free money, it's so destructive. You know, yeah. like we give you these runs, man. Every run you're losing money on, but but people don't take the time to 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 think through it a little bit. And frankly, I'm not really a numbers guy. You're right. You need a good a good business owner runs a, a p l but really you don't need to run a p l to know you're not going to make any money on eight dollars a, a, a run yeah I mean, that, yeah that, definitely just, definitely so definitely i man i got a facility here they got um 30 medicaid 30 medicaid um individual and she was like you know if you get with medicaid you can make it approved you can have every like you can be responsible for everyone and i was like i was trying to make it make sense but it just still didn't make sense. You know, uh, we have a new van, uh, like well, my business model, I plan to pay my employees well and not pennies because we provide high quality service. So in, in order to provide high quality service, you need to be paying your employees and investing in your employees to provide, to be able to provide that high quality service, you know, uh, because that's another thing, like, you know, you get employees that don't take your equipment and, you know, all that falls down to you not being paid enough, so you're not able to pay your employees enough. And, you know, I'm looking at this from a scale standpoint, not from an owner operator standpoint, like, you know, um, and that's why I feel like, you know, it should be a lot of people, 
a lot of people like just from looking into the looking at the non-emergency transportation groups a lot of people you know uh, like starting up they they look at it from a from a i'm gonna do the work standpoint you know but if in order to really enjoy the fruits of your labor you have to be you have to keep scale in mind from band one you know you, you need to start off right otherwise you're exactly gonna go, you're gonna go broke so exactly you know i i, I yeah it's got to make sense for me to get out of bed otherwise otherwise it doesn't make sense you know exactly um exactly and we talked about that uh when when the facility had um when I told the facility their van broke, they were dealing with another company, but there was in a formal agreement, and that company was providing them with extremely low rates on a, um, well, I wouldn't say the rates were extremely low. It was like 25 pickup and then like 275 a mile. So that's not extremely low, but the thing about it is they were providing a net 30, you know, um, so you were telling me, I was like, man, should I beat the rates and provide net 30? You know, you was like, you know, what you should do is do a discount, seven day discount, and but keep your rates the same because if I'm going to be choice B, I might as well get paid what I want to get paid. You know, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, so ain't no point of me beating them out. So I sit, I sit them the rates just like that. So, you know, one day they're going to need me. If they don't, then they don't. But one day they do need me. They're going to pay my rates too. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, make get, me the, exactly. the, the A team. Well, then we'll talk about lowering the rates. You're going to keep me on the B squad. Why am I lowering the rates? Exactly. So, so exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, um, you know, I don't want to go on forever. I do have a final question. And, you know, I've been following you on social media, as the kids say. I'm not your first interview. You do, you're out there, man. You're doing interviews. Yeah. Yeah. What has been the effect of that? Um, you know, um, the, I'm big on giving back the information I've learned, you know, and more or less letting people my age and my peers know that it's possible. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, so that's been the biggest effect, man. Like, people... Get, having access to this type of information, you know, because uh, outside, like I said, this is actually my sixth company since 2020. Oh, yeah. So, Whoa. so yeah, because I opened the audio shop through the pandemic. That was a passion based business. Uh, while I had the audio shop, I opened a dumpster rental company. Uh, I did courier services. Like I was like the pandemic really. I was in college then, and it really turned me into a whole different like. I went into a whole different mode because I I wasn't good at taking online classes. That's the whole sole purpose behind it. And I knew like I had a great send me to, you know, be able to try things, you know, and through all these trial and tribulations, I've learned so much and through so many ex all these experiences, I learned so much and through business credit, like this whole business is completely ran on business credit. You know, and uh, those are one of the, the one of the things that I teach to my people is how to establish their business credit in 90 days, you know, how okay. to establish their personal credit to where they can personally guarantee their business and it not affect their debt to come in, their debt to come in, their debt to income ratio. Uh, you know, so there's little tips and tricks because uh, cash is king, man, but you don't want to have your money tied up when you could, you know, use someone else's money. And then uh, you'll, you'll rather, <laughs> this is my personal opinion, right? I would rather have money and owe people money than not have no money. <laughs> it, you know, that's my personal opinion. Seriously, man, seriously. So, like, you know, leverage has been a big thing for me. Um, and using it right, man, you will, you will be successful. And I feel like, you know, like I said, through these interviews, uh, I'm able to, uh, you know, let people know that it's, it's possible. And, you know, when people see familiar faces and they're like, wow, if he can do it, I can, I'm 21, you know, like there's no age on it, you know? Right. And, um, and that's most important. Like you're not too old, you're not too young because a business, they don't care who the owner is as long as they provide quality service. Uh, you know, they always come through, they're reliable, uh, they're professional, they're courteous. So as long as you can do those things 
and you know your market, you're going to be okay. Well, you know, somebody like you is, is, is the dream candidate for so many reasons. You know, I think I said in one of my videos that like, nobody likes a salesperson, but everybody likes the underdog. And yeah. frankly, anybody can be the underdog, you know, it, it, exactly. it, it doesn't matter. But, you know, here's this young guy that's starting his own business. How do you not root for Cortland? How do you not root for Cortland? You know, exactly. Um, but, but, you know, I've got other students that are older and they're just as sweet and just as endearing. And how do you not root exactly. for them? You know, so, exactly. so uh, again, nobody, nobody likes a, a salesperson, but our product is a good product. Our product is a exactly. product that everybody wants. Um, exactly. You know, it, I, I, I was just going to say, man, like, I've literally had clients that we've built relationships past just to transport because this is a, for a lot of people, this is us transporting their parents. Right. You know, family is everything to a lot of people. Family right. is everything to me. Right. So when someone's mother can ride with you and she say, that, wow, this is the most uh, uh, calmest my mother has ever been riding with non-emergency transportation, one, that makes you feel good because you know that you know that they're in safe hands, but they also know that they're in safe hands, right? You know, and then, this relationship building is like on steroids. When you're taking exactly. somebody's mother, you know, and, and, and the mother's happy, then the son that's paying it is they're gonna they're gonna overpay you. You know, exactly. I mean, it, 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 I, so yeah, it's it this is a very rewarding business. Can be tough. It's got its dark yeah. days, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, the toughest part, man, like, people ask me, like, how did, like, when I first, like, launched a business, people was like, man, that's what I've been wanting to do. How do you do it? Well, it's how you do any business, right? You you put the business plan together, you go out and market, and, you know, let it be known this is the service you offer in the marketplace. Um, like, what else what else is there to know <laughs> the the difference in life is courage you know yeah. the fact of the matter is you don't know what's going to happen you Definitely. know but but only some of us are brave enough to take the chance only some of yeah. us are brave enough to fail and you know yeah. even that word failure you know i I love fights and, uh, you know, I'm a big UFC fan and I think it's Dominic Cruz that says, you know, you win or you learn. Maybe I got exactly. the guy wrong, but the bottom line is in business, you learn, you learn. So, exactly. So, exactly. You know, I, 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 one of, one of my, I'm like you, uh, just a serial entrepreneur and, yeah, you know, I used to have this really beautiful winning record of, of businesses that I launched and did successful, but man, I've had I've had some duds. And yeah, exactly. The, exactly. The biggest failure. I I promoted fights <laughs> many years ago. I promoted some fights in New Mexico, and uh, I, I want to say I lost ten grand in one night, and it took me like ten years to pay it off. But you know what, man? So what? I know you learned something from it, though. No. <laughs> you know, I feel as though had I stuck with it, I could have made it. Yeah. You know, I think that you know, outside of outside of uh, you know the, the 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 doctor and the lawyer and you know those really yeah. most businesses you can hire the the key people that you need. I mean, most people, I, it really. To be an entrepreneur is, is the greatest thing. It really is. Exactly. So. Exactly. And, you know, to add on to that, man, I'm going to say two pieces, right? So about failure, man. Failure, what I realized is failure is not anything external. So if your business go down, that's not a failure. But that's not your failure, right? The only time you fail is when you give up on yourself. That's a failure. 
you know, but as far as a business going down, that's not a failure as far as uh, your, well, we're talking about business here. So it's, that's the only time you fail is when you go down on yourself. You know, I'll tell you, you a very know, funny yourself. story. I never really made this connection until just now talking to you. Part of why I'm no longer in the non-emergency transportation business, I'm mistakes on my part and a dirt bag. Yeah. I got sued and the, yeah. the lawsuit ate me up, man. It ate me up. Yeah. And I would meet other entrepreneurs and they're like, you know, man, it happens. <laughs> you know, if you're successful, you will be sued. That That is the way the, the, the game is played. And, exactly. um, you know, I have friends in Arizona and they have painted a picture of me that is not realistic. There are friends that I have that think I am successful in every adventure. They, and, yeah. and they've told me that. And they've been like, yeah. They've been like, uh, you know, I started a business and I failed and yeah. that, and that sort of defined them. Yeah. You know, the way the lawsuit defined me, it's, but, it, but it's sort of, you know, I'm in a better place than I used to be, but you know, yeah. at that moment, it, you know, I let it define me, but yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just, um, and you know, what's, you know, what else is crazy about that is people think the same thing about me. Like, you know, you're successful, like. I took a lot of losses. Like I just recently, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Airbnbs or not, but of course. I lost I lost twelve thousand on the Airbnb in October, you know, and it hurt. It hurt. But I was reading a, I was reading a um and it's crazy because I moved into I got I relocated into an even better Airbnb that's doing amazing. But at the end of the day, um, I read a I read a book and it was like the game to the 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 rule of thumb to entrepreneurship is staying in the game long enough. Because if you stay in the game long enough, you have to win. It's you so true. Win. It's so true. <laughs> you know, it it is um yeah, it's funny because because you know, my dad used to say that the key to life is showing up every day. Exactly. And man, exactly. If if you, uh, and, and that's what I try and do with my channel is like, yeah. Listen, you don't need to take eight dollars runs from. Just pick up the phone. Exactly. Just pick up the exactly. phone or, or, do, or you know exactly. go ahead and do the the Facebook module or exactly. you know I mean go. Because that's a form of a boss. You know, a lot of people, they go into entrepreneurship because they don't want a boss. Right. And, you know, when you settle for these broker rates, that they're your boss. They determine when you get paid, you know. You know, when they, you are a boss. They determine more than that. You know, yeah. I, I personally, I, 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 I'd like to do a longer video on it. But I think it's criminal. Again, like, yeah. there are good brokers and bad brokers and everything in between. But... You know, they have you do their paperwork on their computer. They will inspect your van. And, you know, literally, it's worse than being an employee. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like they keep that thumb on you. And the only way to come up from that under that thumb is you got to get that profit paid, man. So you got to call. You got to go into these facilities. And you don't even have to say much. Hey, I just want to stop by and drop off some of my information. Like, like how we was telling, man, like how we was talking and I was preparing for the strip to sit down and pitch to the people. And I had like a whole strip of questions. You said, you know, you're kind of prying. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. You know, you're like, you didn't even know, ask two things. You need to know two things. And, you know, I threw away that whole sheet and I went in there and asked those two questions. <laughs> and, you know, they, they talk like, uh, they talk because people like to talk, especially about their problems. Yeah, you know, and uh, if you somebody that can find a solution to their problem, man, they're gonna tell you, you know. So, man, I mean, well, that's that's in bad. business, man. You you gotta. Hey, wait, one more thing. I was gonna say too. Uh, it's your mentality because even though uh, you got sued and things, and the people in Arizona think that you're, you know, you're successful, and it's, it's because how you operate yourself. I I know you don't walk with your shoulders down. I know you right. speak with enthusiasm. Right. 
you know, I know you're excited about everything you do because you can you can hear it in your voice, you know, and that's the real success, you know, like when you walk in, you walk in like you are it, you right. know, you believe in yourself, like it translates to everything, you know, and that's something I had to learn. I had to develop because it's develop. It, it's a it's something you got to develop, you know, it's things you got to unlearn, things you got to relearn. So. You know, it's a it's a funny thing because. Because, boy, you you got it, man. You've got so much wisdom uh, at such a young age. Uh, you have dialed in on, on, on the, the big, important lessons in life. And uh, I, I have no doubt you're going to be wildly successful, as successful as you want to be in life. Um, so let me, let me ask you, if, uh, if people want to get in touch with you, is there a way for them to do so? Yeah, um, you can shoot me a message, Cortland Dixon on Facebook, or I'm on Instagram at OD number two, R E A L O D two real. That's my when I had my car audio business. That was my car audio business name. So, yeah. Man. Well, yeah. Um, send me a, send me that information, and I can put it in the link in the description. But uh, okay. man, it's it's been an absolute pleasure and. You know, you know, it, yeah, man. I enjoy our conversations, man. I enjoy our conversations. Yes, well, sir. until next time, I always say drive fast and take chances. <laughs> Do you know why I say that? Why that? Number one, I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the people within our, our industry, certain people. Yeah. I, I think it would irritate them. So, <laughs> you know, those that <laughs> the, the love rules. People. So, you know. Yeah, the yeah. uptight ones. Yeah. Follow every rule. But, uh, all right, man, we're going to we're gonna end it here. And uh, all right, Chris. until next time, drive fast and take care. All right, man. Later. Yes, sir.